Hello, and welcome to the rules explanation video for whatever happened to Pizza at McDonald's the board game. I am the designer of the game, journalist, activist, and multidiscipline artist, Brian Thompson. Whatever Happened to Pizza at McDonald's The Board Game is based on the investigative journalism program, or IJP, entitled Whatever Happened to Pizza at McDonald's, which is a chronicle of my investigation into whatever happened to the pizza at McDonald's. The game simulates the battle between the Friends of Truth, which are those who would seek to uncover the true reason why McDonald's stopped serving pizza, and the Enemies of Truth, which are those who would keep this foul secret at all costs. Two to four players will command their factions in a fierce competition that includes tactical movement around the dual ringed board, risky management of resources, and clever card play using both tricks of the trade and undercover ops cards. Whatever happened to Pizza at McDonald's the board game combines the simple strategy of classic games with the diabolical intrigue of journalistic pot boilers such as All the President's Men. In this video, I will teach you the basic rules for how to play. Hopefully, after watching this video, you will be able to enjoy a game of whatever happened to Pizza at McDonald's, the board game, with only the use of your player aid and an occasional glance at the rule book. A note before we begin. The copy of the game I am using for this video is a prototype, and some details may be different from the final retail version, but this is largely representative of the finished product. To start, let us discuss the game board. The board is divided into two regions, the United States of America, which composes the outer ring of spaces, and the nation of Canada, which composes the inner ring. Though McDonald's pizza was an international menu item, the USA and Canada composed its primary theater of operations. Perhaps future expansions to this game will explore its role in other territories. Starting at the headquarters of their faction, Players will move around and between these two regions as they attempt to eliminate all opposing characters from the game. Let us now discuss the compositions of these factions. The Friends of Truth are composed of journalists, represented by the color blue, and the public, represented by the color green. The Enemies of Truth are composed of shadowy executives, who are red and clueless stooges, who are yellow, in honor of their basic cowardice. Each faction consists of three playable characters. In a four and three player game, each player will control one faction, and all will be in direct competition with each other. In a two player game, each player will take on two of the loosely affiliated factions, whether they be the friends or the enemies of truth. The game does not officially support a single player option, but, if one suffers from disassociative identity disorder or a similar illness, it is quite possible to use the multiplayer rules by yourself. Each character card displays the same two statistics. Resolve, which is the force of the character's will, and Candor, which is the ability of the character to give useful information. Resolve is unchanging, but Candor is adjustable through the course of the game, and its current level is indicated by the position of the Candor marker. Each card indicates a character's starting candor level. The resolve and candor statistics are used during conflicts in the game, and I will detail those conflicts later in this video. For now, let us discuss the steps one takes on his or her turn. Gameplay proceeds in four steps. Move, disagree slash gotcha, buy, and spread information. Only the first step, moving, is mandatory. The rest are optional. To move your characters, you will roll two six-sided dice. You may combine the sum of these dice and move a single character that number of spaces in a clockwise direction around the board. So, for example, if I rolled two dice and received a two and a one, I could move a single character three spaces in a clockwise direction. One, two, three. Please note that one may only cross between the USA and Canada rings at a border crossing, which are located at each headquarters space in the corner of the board. 
Note also that you may use a border crossing at any faction's headquarters, not just your own. So, for example, let's say the same character were moving three more spaces and wanted to cross into Canada. One, two. On my second move, I am now at the headquarters for the green faction. Even though it is not the same headquarters as the yellow player's headquarters, I can still use their border crossing to move the final space into Canada. Additionally, you may move two characters using one die for each. So, in the same example where I rolled a two and a one, I could move this character two spaces, and I could move a second character one space. Which characters to move and in what order are up to you. Finally, when you land on a space, you must immediately follow the directions of that space. The spaces in Whatever Happened to Pizza at McDonald's, the board game, each offer a unique opportunity, the details of which are explained on your player aid. Your position on the board may offer certain advantages or disadvantages. For example, being in the region of Canada could protect you from conflicts originating with an opponent in the United States. But note a special rule about Canada spaces. Each time you enter a Canada space, you must pay a tribute of one information token to the Queen of England, who is the tyrannical ruler of the nation of Canada. Information is the currency of the game, and will be detailed later in this video. The second step of your turn is to disagree slash gotcha, and again, this step is optional. If your character lands on the same space as an opposing character, a conflict called a disagreement or a gotcha may ensue. To disagree, you simply declare that you are disagreeing with the target character. But, if you are not quick, your opponent may engage with you first by calling gotcha. In either case, the conflict plays out in the same manner. Each player rolls a number of six-sided dice corresponding to their character's current candor level. So, for example, let us say that Larry Truck's current candor level is 2, and Monroe Boswell's current candor level is three. On the first round of the disagreement, Larry Truck will roll two dice and Monroe Boswell will roll three. Let us try it. Larry Truck will roll two dice. The highest single number Larry Truck rolled is a six. Monroe Boswell will roll three dice. The highest single number Monroe Boswell rolled is a four. Therefore, Larry Truck is the winner of this round of the disagreement, and Monroe Boswell's candor level is lowered by one. Now his candor level is two. In the second round of the disagreement, he will roll two dice, and Larry Truck will roll two dice. Play continues in this manner until one character's candor level is reduced to zero, in which case that character is eliminated from the game. If you roll a tie, simply roll again. The winning character receives any tools of the trade cards assigned to the losing character, more on cards in a moment, and the winner's candor level is raised by one. The third optional step on your turn is to buy. You may spend one information token in your possession to purchase a card from the top of the card deck, or you could purchase a researcher represented by these pyramidal tokens. Again, I will reveal more details about cards and researchers in a moment. The fourth and final optional step on your turn is to spread information. Each faction's corner of the game board contains three boxes for use in this step. As the final act of your turn, you may place any number of information tokens on any of these three boxes. If the sum of any player's dice rolls on subsequent turns totals either of the two numbers contained within one of these boxes, you will earn the indicated return on your information investment at the beginning of your next turn. So, for example, let us say I invested this information in the box labeled with a 3 and an 11. On subsequent players' turns, if the sum of their dice totals 3 or 11 when they roll for movement, I will receive a return of 4 to 1. So, if the player to my left rolled a 3, I would receive four information tokens. On my next turn, I will roll for movement, collect any information that I have spread, then I will remove the information that I invested in the spread information boxes. 
A crack team of advanced mathematical scientists at the Math Homework Help Hotline advised me on the makeup of these spread information boxes so that the numbers less likely to be rolled with two dice will offer a higher return on investment. We have covered the steps of a turn. Since we were just speaking about information, let us now discuss the role of researchers. Researchers represent the unpaid interns you will utilize to uncover more information. Researchers may be bought, sold, or earned throughout the game. Certain cards and spaces may utilize your researchers to gather more information. For example, if you land on the check your email space, you will take one information token for each researcher in your possession. Finally, let us discuss cards. Through the course of the game, you may receive two types of cards, tools of the trade and undercover ops. Tools of the trade cards must be assigned to the characters who wish to use them. When you receive a tool of the trade card, whether by purchasing it or looting it from a defeated foe, you must assign it to one of your faction's characters. Let us again say you are playing as Larry Truck and you received the tools of the trade card, Persuade. If you wish to assign this card to Larry Truck, you would simply place it under his character card. Characters may have any number of tools of the trade cards assigned to them and use them on their turns, but they may only have one of each unique card. So Larry Truck could not have another Persuade card assigned to him. Undercover Ops cards are held in your hand. When you acquire an Undercover Ops card, place it face down in front of you to keep your abilities secret from your enemies. You may only play one Undercover Ops card in your turn, and it must be before the buying step of your turn. Once you have used an Undercover Ops card, you must place it in the discard pile. You now have all the information you need to begin playing a game of whatever happened to Pizza at McDonald's the board game. Further rules clarifications and strategy tips may be found on your player aid and in the rulebook. When it is released, the game will be available through our attractive website, www.pizzaatmcdonalds.com, in both a physical version via a top quality manufacturer and in digital version via Tabletopia. Thank you for your attention and your interest. I am Brian Thompson. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day slash evening.